thank you, Willie, and uh, can I thank Brookfield for inviting me along. And it's a really hard choice sometimes, Willie. You sit up in Parliament and listen to really stimulating debate from a whole lot of really interesting people. I come down to this wonderful place and enjoy a couple of drinks and some wonderful company. So I'm glad I'm here. Um, at the, one of the reasons I'm glad I'm here, Brian, uh, is I now understand that by stealth, Western Australia has been taken over by Canadians. <laughs> and uh, I think this is something that we need to take up at the highest level of government. I think if a lot of us knew that that was happening, we would be, we would be concerned. Uh, but we shouldn't. And I, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, Brian, uh, representing, of course, Brookfield here tonight, and also the CEO of Brookfield Rail, um, Paul Marson, who is unfailing, uh, and Bree Badgie, uh, we're here to acknowledge and to celebrate. It's very interesting to reflect on what is happening in Western Australia at the moment. And I often reflect on the changes in this state in terms of what's happening in our ports. I have ministerial responsibility for ports, they're very important to our state. Last year, in the 2010 calendar year, for the first time ever, uh, Western Australia exported over $100 billion worth of commodity exports. Uh, that saw us account for around 46% of the total commodity-based exports from Australia. That meant in the last 20 years, going back to 1990, we accounted for half of the export growth <coughs> generated out of Australia uh, for a state of 10% of the nation's population. Um, I suspect, although we may not see it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and indeed on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, that when we look back in maybe five years or 10 years or 15 years, um, we will have witnessed and lived through and worked through uh, one of the most uh, significant periods of economic transformation of this state. Uh, you'd probably have to go back to the 1890s, to the gold rush days of the 1890s, and out of the eastern gold force to find a time when the Western Australian economy has changed in the way that it will change uh, over the next decade. Uh, this uh, is not a change which you will characterise as a, as a boom, which will be followed by a bust. It is a fundamental shift in the basis of the state's economy, a fundamental shift being driven by the resources sector and a fundamental shift uh, being driven by the energy sector. And Brian, if you were to sit uh, 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 on high and look across the world and work out the sorts of assets you would like to have your capital tied up in in the 21st century global economy, you'd probably like to have your assets tied up in an entity that had uh, access to low carbon fuel, you probably have like to have your assets uh, tied up in an entity that has access to, um, to iron uh, and to the other components that are used to make steel and specialist products. And I also think, and sometimes we forget this here, you probably like to have access to a commodity that can produce food. And when you look at all of those three components, uh, Western Australia ticks every box. And uh, that is why uh, our state has been driven through this period uh, of economic transformation. Uh, I suppose two of the challenges that come from that are coping with a growing population, and indeed our state's population is growing. And I think importantly tonight, uh, the other major challenge is dealing with uh, growing uh, freight challenges. Perhaps to put that into perspective uh, by, by looking at two ports. Port Hedden, our largest port, Australia's largest iron ore port, um, this year uh, will export around 200 million tonnes of iron ore. When it was conceived back in the 1960s and driven into reality into the 1970s, uh, they thought if Port Hedden really did well, it would get to 10 million tonnes. 200 million tonnes this year. Potentially within the next four or five years, 495 million tonnes of iron ore through Port Hedden. Potentially, uh, a few years after that, 700 million tonnes of iron ore going out of Port Hedden. Uh, even more close to home in Fremantle, Harbour, which this year will handle 600,000 containers, 20 foot containers, uh, that will double uh, over the next 10 years. So the freight challenges in this state are immense. As a government, uh, we look to the private sector, to private sector investment, uh, and <coughs> to private sector operation uh, to assist us meet those freight challenges. If we rely on the state to invest and to operate the port infrastructure and the transport infrastructure that we'll need, take advantage of the opportunity that the 21st century presents to us, uh, we will never get it. And we will do an incredible disservice to the whole future generation of Western Australians. And uh, I am very focused 
and the government is very focused on making sure um, we forge valuable links with uh, the private sector that will have such an important role to play. Uh, in relation to uh, Brookfield Rail, uh, formerly Westnet, uh, since uh, in the 10 or 11 years since uh, you became involved uh, in particular with our rail network in Western Australia, uh, I think it would be fair to say that you have forged uh, an excellent reputation both at a government level as a partner in broader economic growth of the state, and I think from an individual stakeholder level uh, as a great provider of services to customers. And as I look at some of the opportunities in the short to medium term, uh, Brookfield Rail has a very, very important role to play. Uh, an important role to play in unlocking the resource potential of the Middle West, and I note the recent, um, uh, the recent announcements around uh, Brookfield's partnership uh, with the Corrado project, an important role to play in terms of opening up the Yulgarn Iron Ore pro uh, province, uh, and that will involve, uh, I think, potentially 15 to 20 million tonnes of iron ore going out of Quinana, uh, which uh, won't be without its challenges, Paul, I'm still waiting for you to drive me down the railway line and explain those to me. Uh, and also perhaps 20 million tonnes of iron ore additional uh, to the 10 that currently goes out of Esperance. So everywhere you look in Western Australia, there is opportunities. Uh, there are resources waiting to be um, realised um, and business opportunities are waiting to be invested in. And in each of those cases, uh, it's my view uh, that Brookfield has a role to play. Uh, so Paul, can I extend to you a big thank you for inviting, inviting me along tonight. Uh, I was happy to come. Uh, the reason I was happy to come is because I appreciate all that, uh, that your company has done thus far. Uh, and I look forward to working with you to realise uh, a lot of the opportunities that are presented to all of Australians uh, over the next few years. So can I congratulate you on the transition from Westfield to Brookfield? Westfield. Yeah. Oh, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> it's going okay until then. <laughs> Let me get my notes out again. <laughs> I've written in hand on one piece of paper, Westfield. <laughs> and in closing, just make one other observation. Uh, and it, it's really to pick up on a point Brian made. Uh, Brookfield are a substantive international investor. They are a substantive international investor in quality assets. Western Australia and business opportunities in Western Australia are substantive quality international investment opportunities. And we should be proud that in this state uh, we are able to compete globally for capital. Competition for capital is tight, opportunities are many, uh, investments are limited. And I think the fact that a company of the, the size and substance of Brookfield, perhaps not known at this stage to a lot of Western Australians, is here participating in our study, whether it be in investments in the CD or in investments in our rail infrastructure or assisting us build what is one of the largest hospital projects in the world, is symbolic of the coming of age of Western Australia uh, as a major player uh, on the global economy uh, in our areas of strength as we head into the 21st century. Uh, and we wish uh, you, Paul, and your team all the best in leveraging for those opportunities. Thank you very much.